Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about X-ray crystallography. And X-ray crystallography is a very efficient method in uh, protein biochemistry. And if we want to understand the 3D structure of protein and how the amino acids are arranged in a 3D space, then X-ray crystallography is our weapon. We have two weapons, NMR and X-ray crystallography. But NMR, we can't do NMR for a protein which is more than 20 kilodalton. The protein which are less than 20 kilodalton or equal to 20 kilodalton, then we can solve their structures with NMR. But for a protein uh, greater than 20 kilodalton, X-ray crystallography is the only way. And we are very familiar with X-ray. And the problem with uh, our conventional microscopy technique is our microscopy can actually show us the cellular details but it can't show us the molecular details or how atoms and molecules are actually uh, arranged in the 3d plane so for if we want to visualize the double helix structure of the dna and how the bases are arranged microscopy can't show it if we want to see the amino acids how the amino acids are arranged in a protein microscopy can tell us about these things and which can tell us about these things at least extra crystallography can give a clue about these things so we would look at the principles behind extra crystallography and how we can use extra crystallography for protein biochemistry so let's talk about x-ray a little bit so x-ray let's see where x-ray lies in our visible spectrum so if we draw a line to denote our visible spectrum then first we would have gamma rays then we would have x-rays then we would have what we called the uv and then we have the visible range so the x-rays have very low wavelength and the wavelength is in nanometer order and this is very important we would understand it in a moment and now uh, the extra crystallography is actually dependent upon the uh, x-ray diffraction the diffraction what is diffraction diffraction is a phenomenon of bending of light now we know that light travel in a straight path so then why the bending light can even bend around edges or any slits provided that the slit or the edge would be in a comparable uh, uh, dimension with that particular wavelength of that light so uh, the visible light can easily bend around uh, slit but uh, the x-ray would only bend around and diffract it when it is passed through a lattice of protein so in order to understand more we would see uh, the Bragg's law so for uh, x-ray crystallography the basic scheme is what we have to do is we have to first we have to crystallize our protein solution that we want to know the structure about the protein then what we would do we would shine x-ray we would sign x-ray on that protein and we as we expect the egg that a crystal would diffract the x-ray and the x-ray would diffract it in all directions and it would give us uh, actually a diffraction pattern which would somewhat look like this there are many diffraction spots after getting the diffraction spot we would do our mathematics and what we would do we would actually Fourier transform this thing and what we would get after these uh, diffraction pattern we would get something which is called electron density map and this electron density map is very important so this is our basic scheme for electron density map so once we have our electron density map then we try to fit our atoms and molecules inside that electron density map and we would exactly look for a perfect match or perfect fit just like a jigsaw puzzle and after that after doing that uh, following some algorithms and statistics what we would get we would ultimately get a uh, we would ultimately able to build a 3d model so here uh, arbitrary 3d model i'm building so we are able to build a 3d model of the protein in this way 
we could uh, derive the structural information from the x-ray crystallography experiment now let's see a little bit about uh, the Bragg's law and x-ray diffraction so inside this crystal that I have drawn previous previously we would have lattice lattice means three-dimensional arrangement of these uh, protein molecules so here we would have many lattice points apart from the lattice point there are uh, atoms in these corners so these are basic unit cells so what we would expect let's draw it in a 2d diagram so here we have a lot of lattice points and here is a deeper layer of this lattice point corresponding to this and even more deeper lattice point corresponding to this now what would happen we would shine x-ray and the x-ray would fall on our particular uh, uh, lattice point and it would be diffracted the intraatomic distance is in nanometer order and the extra wavelength is also in nanometer order that is why diffraction could take place when x ray falls onto this crystal lattice now if we see another x ray falling even in a deeper uh, lattice plane it would be also diffracted now if we just analyze these two beams and the phase of these two beams what we would see that uh, let's call it a and let's call it b uh, what we would see that these beam b have to travel a little bit more distance a little bit more path than beam a now if we draw a perpendicular and call this total dis distance x so it would be also x but here is a portion which is extra we call it delta x and also when the wave gets back it returns also it has to travel an extra path delta x so the net extra path that the wave have to travel the wave b have to travel is 2 delta x this is the extra path that wave b have to travel now if we uh, denote the intraatomic distance as d and this is the incidence angle theta what we would see that this angle would also be theta this angle inside would also be theta so this is also d and from there we can derive that the value of x would be actually d times sine theta so the value of 2 delta x would be actually 2d sine theta so this is the net path difference between uh, this is net path difference between a and b x rays and this path difference is 2d sine theta and as per Bragg's law as per Bragg's law this distance is equal to n lambda where n could be so 2d sine theta is equal to n lambda where n could be an integer like n could be 1 2 3 or even n could be half 2 half etc when n is like this 1 2 and 3 it would do a constructive interference when n is in fraction it would do a destructive interference now what is constructive interference and destructive interference and why uh, we would see a constructive and destructive interference at all so when there is a path difference as we know there is also a phase difference corresponding to a path difference so these x-ray that these b x-ray is actually phase shifted now when it is reflected and or scattered uh, there is a chance that it would interfere with a if we if it interferes constructively then what we would get we would get uh, another wave with a high amplitude uh, let's see say for instance this is our axis and here is our wave a this is our wave a and this is our wave b and 
from this drawing you can understand that the crest and trough of these A and B are exactly similar. So these two waves are in phase. So they would uh, uh, actually interfere constructively forming a resultant wave which have even a more amplitude actually 2A. If this amplitude is A and A this amplitude would be 2A. Now what we would see we would see the destructive interference. Ultimately the destructive interference or destructive interference here is our beam A and here is our beam B and they are actually out of phase and if they have same amplitude then the, their resultant wave would not produce any resultant wave it is a destructive interference and if their amplitudes vary then it will produce a wave whose amplitude resultant amplitude would be reduced so therefore here the take home message is that the path difference would correspond to a phase difference and due to phase difference we would get a interference pattern a diffraction pattern or interference pattern what you whatever you can see uh, interference pattern or diffraction pattern and analyzing that diffraction pattern and Fourier transform this diffraction pattern we would get our density map and after getting the density map we can fit we would try to fit our atoms and molecules inside that density map and we would end up getting a protein model and we have to validate this protein model by putting it into the Ramachandran plot and we have to plot its phi and psi angles and we have to validate our protein structure in these uh, by putting it into a Ramachandran plot. So this is all about the X-ray crystallography. I uh, hope you enjoyed and hope you liked it. Please subscribe. Thank you.